Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the 2.6 algebraic concepts external. In particular, we're going to be looking at all the merit questions from that 2017 exam. So let's jump straight into it. Question number 13. Um, we've been asked basically to simplify that particular expression. And when you're dealing with powers, just a reminder that fraction and negative powers are never really simple. It's your job to go ahead and simplify them into whole numbers. And that's what I've got here, positive indices, whole numbers. So again, I've got a power outside a bracket with a fraction in the middle. I'm going to start by expanding the bracket. So that there is going to be 16x to the power 4, and all of that is going to be to the power of 3 over 2. And then down the bottom, same thing, 6 or x to the power of 6 divided by 3 over 2. I'm now going to expand those brackets, so that's 16 to the power of 3 over 2 times x to the power of 4 times 3 over 2. So that power is being multiplied, not the whole thing itself. Then that's going to be divided by x to the power of 6 times 3 over 2. Um, a bit of simplifying comes into play here, so if you're looking at that 16 to the power of 3 over 2, that there is 16 to the power of 1 half times 3, which is the square root of 16. All of that is cubed. The square root of 16 is 4, so that's 4 cubed, which comes to 64. So a bit messy, so that's 64. Now, dealing with the x to the power of 4 times 3 over 2, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by that 2 is 6. So that's going to be x to the power of 6. Similar thing for the bottom. 6 times 3 is 18, 18 divided by 2 is 9, we're going to get x to the power of 9. We can then cancel out some of the x's, there'll be 3 left on the bottom, so that'll be 64 divided by x to the power of 3. We are now looking at question number 14, and we've got this big messy expression, we've been asked to simplify it. So 2x squared minus 50, all of that is divided by 9x squared minus 39x minus 30. So the first thing to note, I'm seeing a lot of common factors. Up the top there's a 2 in common, down the bottom there's a 3 in common. So I'm going to start by taking out those common factors. Um, so there's the 2 taken out and the 3 taken out um, just over here. Now that I've taken those out, I'm then going to be looking at factorizing what's left over inside the bracket. The top half is going to be pretty easy. That's going to be x minus 5, x plus 5. So that's a perfect square. But the bottom half, half because there's a 3 in front of that x squared, um, it's going to be a bit more complicated. So I'm going to use some space to do my work in on the side over here. So that there's in the brackets. Um, we're going to use the grouping method. So that's going to be 3 times negative 10. That comes to negative 30. We're now going to think what multiplies the negative 30 adds to negative 13, and I'm thinking it's negative 15 and positive 2. So that's going to become 3x squared minus 15x plus 2x minus 10. I'm then going to factorize each of the groups, so that there is going to be a 3x in common, leaving x minus 5. And here we've got a 2 in common, so that's going to be plus 2, and again leaving x minus 5. So I know I did it right, because the same bracket's coming up twice. I can then group what's left over. So the first bracket is going to be 3x plus 2. And the second bracket will be that x minus 5. That there is going to sit on the bottom inside brackets with that denominator. So that's going to be 3 and then 3x plus 2, x plus 5. We can then cancel out. So cancel, cancel. That there is leaving 2 x minus 5 divided by 3, 3x plus 2. Um, at this stage, you probably could expand the numerator and the denominator. In this case, the factorized version or the expanded version, one isn't necessarily simpler than the other, so that's just unnecessary work um, from my perspective. We are now on question number 15, and we've got a log question. We've been asked to solve for x. Um, so just a reminder, this type of question... Um, we're dealing with the format log of the base answer is equal to the power, and that can be switched back and forth between base power equals answer. 
So what we're doing is we've got the log version. We are now going to switch to the index version. So in our case, the S is the X. So X squared is equal to 49 x is equal to the square root of 49 just a reminder that's plus or minus x is equal to or x1 is equal to 7 x2 is equal to negative 7. Um, a lot of us unfortunately would forget that negative part of this um, but make sure you don't and really important we then need to explain why negative 7 is a false answer so false answer because we can't have a negative base of a log function or a log equation. Can't have a negative base. And what I mean by that is that number down the bottom, that can't be zero, it can't be a base, it has to be a number more than zero. We're up to question number 16 now, and I've left that equation up from the previous question because it's going to be of interest to this one as well. We've been asked to find the value of log with a base of the square root of 5 of 1 divided by 125, or 1 125th. Um, and the key thing is we're trying to find the value. So that means we don't know the value currently. So if you think about it that way, so we've got log with our base divided by 1 over 125 equals to x. We don't know that. We're trying to find that. So that's our log version of equation, we're now going to switch that into an index version. So we're going to have the square root of 5 to the power of x is going to be equal to 100 or 1 125th. We can then change how that square root looks, so that's to the power of 1 half is equal to x. And then finally we can change that uh, by expanding the bracket, so that's 5 to the power of 1 half of x. We've got an unknown power, and as soon as you see an unknown power, you've got to think about log in both sides. So I'm just going to do some working over here. So we've got log 5 to the power of 1 half of x is equal to what or log 1 over 125. I'm now going to move that power out to the front. That'll be times 1 half of x. So 1 half of x times log Five is equal to log 1 divided by 125. And I'm just going to do a bit of tricky. I'm going to move that 1 half because everything's being multiplied by the log 5. So that's going to be x times 1 half of log 5 will be equal to log 1 divided by 125. So this 1 half of log 5 is just a multiplication. I can get rid of it and move it to the other side through division. So x will be equal to log 1 divided by 125, all of that is over 1 half of log 5. When I put that into my calculator, be careful with your brackets, make sure that denominator has a bracket, and that will spit out an answer of negative 6. So coming back to our equations, that means this here will have a value of negative 6. We are now on to question number 17, and we've been asked for what values of m does the equation 6x squared minus mx equals negative 3 have two equal roots? So the key thing here being equal roots. Um, so let's jot down our equation. So we've got 6x squared minus mx is equal to negative 3. So the first thing to note is a quadratic, when you're trying to solve it, normally needs to be equal to 0. So let's get rid of that minus 3 by adding 3 to both sides. So we've got 6x squared minus mx plus 3 equals to 0. We've been asked about two equal roots, and the roots will be equal when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Don't do greater than 0. They did try to trick us, I think, with a 2, um, but definitely equal to 0. And we're just going to pull out, well, a is going to be equal to negative or positive 6, B will be equal to negative M, and C will be equal to 3. So we now know that B squared minus 4AC needs to be equal to 0. Just a reminder, that's called the discriminant. Um, so squared is going to be negative M all squared minus 4 times 6 
times 3, that's going to be equal to 0. So we've got m squared minus 72 will be equal to 0. We're now going to go ahead and solve it. So m squared will be equal to 72. m will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 72. m will be equal to plus or minus, convert that to a decimal, 8.4853. And that they had a rounding of four decimal places. You could have left it in third form, I think. Um, but there you go. So when m is the square root of 72, or the negative version of the square root of 72, that means our parabola will be sitting exactly on the x-axis. It'll have two of the exact same answers. Question number 18 is the final achieved question from the 2017 exam. And we've been asked, we've got two fractions adding with each other. We've been told to express it as a single fraction in its simplest form. Let's start off by writing down the um, two fractions. So 9 divided by x squared minus 9 plus 2 divided by 2, oh sorry, 3 divided by 2x. Let's cross that out. 3 divided by 2x plus 6. So the first thing I note when I look at this, I'm, I'm seeing heaps of 3s here. So I'm thinking there'll, there'll definitely be an opportunity to factorize and um, cancel things out later on. But what we're going to do is um, I'm going to start off by cleaning up the bottoms. Um, you can both be expressed as brackets. And when they look as brackets, we can do the crisscross smiley face method or get the co same common denominator, just a bit easier. So let's factorize the bottom part. So that's going to be 9 divided by x minus 3, x plus 3. And that's going to be added to 3 divided by 2x plus 3. So straight away I'm seeing there's some common stuff happening with the denominators. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of mass trickery. We could do the crisscross smiley face method, like bottom times bottom, cross and cross. But I just think that will get a bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to change the denominators so they are the same. So the first step is this one's got a 2 in it. This one doesn't have a 2 in it. So I'm going to times this fraction by 2 over 2, which is 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm not changing the fraction. So that's going to be 18 divided by 2x minus 3x plus 3. Um, this denominator doesn't have the x minus 3. So I'm just going to do a bit of trickery here. I'm going to go x minus 3 and then x minus 3 again. So that comes to 1, so I'm not changing it. So I'm going to go plus 3 x minus 3. All of that is divided by 2 x plus 3 x minus 3. And we can see the two denominators are the exact same now. So when the denominators are the same, we can add together at the top. So that's going to be 18 plus 3 x minus 3. And the denominator will combine that into 1, just like we did there. We can now probably simplify the top. Oh, I just realized I poor mass there. I didn't do the brackets up there. We're now going to expand the brackets. So that's going to be 18 plus 3x minus 9. The denominator is unchanged. I'm now going to group together the top. That's going to be 3x plus 9 minus 3 and then x plus 3 as well. I can factorize the top part now. Jeez, I'm going to run out of room here, but that's they've got a 3 in common, so that's going to be x plus 3 divided by 2x minus 3, x plus 3. The plus 3s cancel each other out, leaving us with 3 divided by 2, and then in brackets, x minus 3. So that there, it's a single fraction. It's in its simplest form. The only thing to note here, because we're dealing with a lot of fractions and denominators, we should check out what the answer can't be. And if you go up to this step here, our answer, if at any stage that is a 3 or a negative 3, the denominator will become 0, which will be a math error. So that means for our solution, x cannot be 3, and x cannot be negative 3. So that wraps up question 18 and all the merit questions in the 2017 exam. Hopefully you found them useful. Keep an eye out for some other revision materials.